Um, so our next uh, session is around cyber threats and endpoints. Um, Jack here is going to do the face for my job, and uh, this is a sponsor, sponsor session from them. So um, take it away. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone's feeling nice and nice and fresh from lunch. Uh, I said, my name's Jack. I've worked for iGel for more than a decade now in a few different technical roles, ending up in, in pre-sales, where I am now. And I figured, what better way to talk to you guys about how iGel specifically deals with uh, cybersecurity threats that target your endpoint devices specifically than with a pretty prominent example that I think everyone in this room should remember from relatively recent memory. Uh, that uh, example being the WannaCry attacks that ripped through the NHS back in 2017. That's, you know, pretty much every traditional base endpoint got loaded with ransomware. You couldn't access patient data, couldn't check in or discharge patients anywhere. The NHS is stretched at the best of times. This was the last thing they needed with, uh, uh, back when this occurred. And because iGel primarily deals with a, well, creates an alternative secure endpoint OS, we were right front and center when this happened. So we got to see exactly what was going on. Now. Traditionally, iGel has always had a pretty big, pretty big footprint within a lot of different NHS trusts, and we've always been deployed alongside the more traditional endpoint OSs, uh, normally being used to connect into Citrix or VMware, some kind of virtualized solution. And the, at the end of the day, the, the key takeaway from when this hit was that when all of the traditional-based endpoints were rendered completely inoperable, uh, everything running iGel just kept working didn't stop, didn't skip a beat. And because we were deployed all throughout various NHS trusts, it really wasn't uncommon at the time to see the IT admins uh, managing all these estates, running around, grabbing every single iGel device that they could get their hands on and redeploying them into their critical care units, their, their ICUs, you know, the places where instant access to patient data is absolutely critical in some cases can make the, the difference between whether a patient lives or dies. So it's very good. I'm pretty proud to say that iGel was a, a fairly substantial piece of assistance for, for those trusts that were using us at that time when this was all going on. Yes, WannaCry happened six a bit years ago now, back in 2017. So why am I bringing this up now? Well, ransomware attacks have been on the rise pretty much ever since. Um, there's several reported uh, statistics out there that show that between 2020 and 2021, reported ransomware attacks increased by somewhere in the region of 500%. These are just the ones that are reported. God knows what the actual number could potentially be, because I think we all know there's quite a few organizations that probably don't report all of these kind of things. Um, but that 500% increase, while that is a fairly scary number in itself, it's not the scariest number that I'm going to talk about. That's, that's the number down in the bottom, uh, bottom corner of this slide here. The sheer amount that organizations have had to pay out over the last couple of years due to these kind of ransomware and cybersecurity attacks. And this just isn't you know, the amount that these organizations are paying out to the orchestrators of these attacks. This is uh, also you know, factors in some of the downtime and everything, that, uh, the, the cost of not being able to work and then on top of that, there is the cost of the fines that get levied to these organizations as an afterthought to this. Things like breaches of GDPR. It's, it's quite hard to argue that you haven't had a GDPR breach if someone walks out the front door with all your user data. So a lot of organizations simply can't afford to pay, for these, pay these kind of fines. It's, it puts them in a really, really dire financial situation. Now, the endpoint device is always the first point of attack for anything like this, right? And that, the, that all really stems down to one key reason. Any traditional based endpoint OS is inherently a writable operating system, and it has the capability to hold user data on that. It is something for these organizations to attack and go after. Yes, you can add data encryption onto your devices. You can secure your logins with MFA, 2FA solutions, and you can layer and layer and layer different types of endpoint security products on top of all of the on top of these solutions uh, to try and make them more secure. You know your your antivirus, your your data loss protection software, secure tunnel VPNs for remote users, etc. But 
all of this adds complexity, and all, of this kind of, all these kind of things bog the solution down. Now, traditional based OS is designed to be inherently very flexible for both consumer and corporate enterprise kind of use. It's designed to be able to take whatever workflow you throw at it and just work for the vast majority of cases. But that flexibility comes at the cost of some security. Now, IGEL OS does things, or IGEL's operating system does things in a completely different way architecturally. So the key point is that from the ground up, IGEL OS is not writable. You cannot store user data on our operating system. If there is no user data to steal, why would a ransomware organization try and steal something that's not there? That's straight off the bat, that, that removes a, a big issue of that point. It, it makes anything running IGEL OS a ransomware non-target. Yes, we have additional security things and pieces in place. You know, we encrypt parts of the drive, any updates and patches that you push down from our centralized management platform, they use data encryption for the traffic and such. We support all of the major 2FA and single sign-on solutions, uh, you know, like Okta and uh, Entra ID and all that kind of stuff. So you still get a good user experience from and a secure experience logging onto and onto, off the device. But at the key point, there's no data there to be attacked and be stolen. The later versions of our IGEL OS on top of that are, uh, they are completely modular. So by doing that, you, and are you having the capability to only deploy down the exact components that you need to do the, the workflows that you are trying to facilitate your end users? It keeps the attack surface nice and small, keeps it nice and concise, keeps everything light and running in a performant manner as well, which is, which is always good. Now, I figured I would, uh, like I said, I'm not, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on, on all the nitty gritty of, uh, you know, exactly how all the security features of, of IGEL work. I'm more than happy to have a more in-depth conversation with any of you guys at the, the, over at the booth we have outside. Um, but I figured I'd uh, run through a couple of user scenarios that have happened in the last couple of months for quite sizable deployments with IGEL OS, just to give you guys a, an idea of the kind of challenges that we're helping organizations solve with our solution. Now, both of these are based over in the US. So I'm using, using both of these for scale and recency. They both happened in the last, last couple of months. And both of the deployments I'm about to talk about are circa 30,000 endpoints and up as the initial piece. So one of the top five largest healthcare organizations over in the US has just finished more than a year of security testing with us. They've absolutely hammered what IGEL does from pretty much every possible angle to make sure we're compliant with every regulatory board and every restriction they have to comply with within their organization. And happy to say we passed that with flying colors. So we met all their security requirements for, for deploying us. But one of the key points of what, as, as to why they actually used us in the first place was our partner integration piece. We have more than 100, uh, 100 different vendor partners that we work with uh, integrating their solutions directly into a, a way that can be added onto our operating system. Uh, this one that. Uh, that, that these guys needed in particular was to do with the Improvata agent, their tap and go, sign on, sign off solution that clinicians all over the world use uh, to drag their sessions between patients between different wards. IGEL over the last couple of years has been working very closely with Improvata. We've completely re-engineered uh, a whole new Improvata endpoint agent to allow us to facilitate these kind of workflows with both cloud-based uh, architectural uh, distribution solutions, things like AVD we can now facilitate through Improvata, which you couldn't do before, as well as more web-based app application solutions, as well, as well as all the traditional Citrix, VMware, on-prem virtualization pieces. Because we were working so closely with them, because the amount of work we put into that agent, that was a big reason why, they, why, they, why this particular organization went with us. They, we provided very good, concise user experience, as well as hitting all their secure, security criteria. The second uh, example I want to talk about is to do with one of the largest insurance uh, brokers based over in the US. Now, like a lot of organizations in the, uh, around the world are, are going to be running into, they had a security concern that was coming up for the, within the next couple of years, and that is the fact that they have tens of thousands of devices in this case, running Windows 10 quite happily, all, around, all out around the environment, but almost all of their endpoints won't actually meet requirements to go to Windows 11. The traditional way to rectify that would be to rip and replace the hardware with something that will support an, up, an update to Windows 11. That's 
quite an excessive amount of capital that you'd have to spend for that size of, size of organization to do this. Uh, in this case, it was tens of millions of dollars they would have to have shelled out for new laptops and PCs and things for users to continue work doing what they're doing today just in a supported fashion in the next couple of years. By taking iGel OS and repurposing all of these devices, they've actually saved tens of millions of dollars from their capital expenditure over the next couple of years. And what this allowed them to do was to take all of that capital and redistribute this into their, what was quite a small portion of their estate's Citrix solution. They always wanted to expand their Citrix environment, but they never had the budget to do so. And the budget that iGel allowed them to reclaim meant that they could throw all of that cap, well, not all that capital, but a sizable chunk of that capital back at Citrix. So now their entire estate is going to be getting the centralized security benefits that Citrix provide, as well as the iGel end, like edge security piece that comes from running our OS. Um, oh yeah, I can sit here and talk about various uh, additional like, examples as to why, why else you would want, like to run iGel OS from manageability, cost saving, more, more in-depth pieces with the security, but yeah, I think uh, if, if you got any of you guys would like, a, like more of a conversation around this, feel free to come and have a chat with me on the stand, feel free to grab a beer afterwards and come have a, come have a conversation. More than happy to answer any questions you guys may have. Thank you very much. Thank you.